All right, we are back from the break. That was a wonderful run of no damage. The stakes are always high, but we pulled through in the end, and it was a fun show, nonetheless. Going more into the spooky grab bag of games we have for you tonight, the next game is going to be a very rare title, actually. Uh, this game has been pretty much unseen by most people, I think, especially in the speedrunning community, and in general, uh, Kuon is a game that has, har uh, I guess, garnered a lot of reputation in the idea that it's extremely expensive. Uh, it's one of those games that you look at it on eBay and it's like, wow, why is this game $1,000? I'm not even exaggerating. Uh, this is one of those old games that is super expensive. Anyway, I'm not sure how she, how she got her copy, but our runner of Kuon is going to be Miss Scarlet Tanager. Feel free to take it away. Uh, the answer to that is it cost me $575 on an offer up listing <laughs> about six months ago. I got lucky it's worth a grand now. And that's the case. All right. But anyway, this is Kuon. And as Ekdice has said, it is an extremely rare game. Hard to find. Most of the runs for this game are on emulator. I'm one of the few people who runs it consistently right now, though Ekdice did put up a run a little, little while ago. Last place, baby, let's go. <laughs> so when you're setting up this game, one thing you always want to make sure that you do is turn vibration off. If you don't turn vibration off, you're going to have a bad time because vibrate the controller will be vibrating for most of the game if you don't. Um, I usually play it in Japanese, but we'll play it in English specifically because I have extra time to show you guys some of the cutscenes. This game makes no sense. It's not going Wait a to minute, you can sense. toggle language? Huh? Yeah, you can toggle language. Can you do that in the Japanese version? Um, I don't know if you can. In, I don't think you can in the Japanese version. You can in the U.S. version. It only changes okay. the voiceover, okay. so it doesn't really have any time save to it. I was about to have a heart attack because uh, <laughs> I own the game and I haven't played it casually. I only sped ran it because I don't speak Japanese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, if I had the English voice acting, I think I could figure my way out. But I was like, oh, God. Yeah. And one thing that's fun once you play through this game a couple times is they actually have the ability for max equipment and hits to kill. I've not done a run with hits to kill on because it terrifies me. If you have this setting on, nine hits, game over. Oh. Um, and there are at least four or five guaranteed hits in this game when you're speedrunning it. But anyway, time will start as soon as I finish the brightness screen. And three, two, one, go. All right. So we are playing the yen phase of the game. We are playing as a girl named Utsuki who has never seen the outside world. And she is about to have a lot of bad things happen to her. Thankfully, they're mostly going to happen in cutscenes. Now I'm going to show you guys this cutscene a little bit just so you can sort of see my favorite thing about the cutscenes and the animation in this game. This is a From Software game. So it is made by the same people who make Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Kingsfield, etc. And because of that, you will not see a single facial mouth animation the entire game, even though you'll have all kinds of zoom-ins on faces. Just no mouths. Everybody's telepathic, apparently. Don't worry about this. There is someone over there. Wait, I'll go see. Please stay here until I get back. So that other character is our sister, Kureha. We are playing as Utsuki. Kureha just self told us to stay back. What we are going to do instead is try and chase her down. The entire goal of Utsuki's campaign is to try and find her sister. Despite the fact she will see her sister multiple times, she will never once call out to her. Now, what just happened is something called vertigo, and it causes the screen to go all wibbly wobbly for a few minutes. Sometimes it can last 30 seconds. It usually is closer to a minute. But it can make it a little bit hard to control the character because you can't see where you're going half the time. Now here I picked up a silkworm disc. That is for a puzzle later. And if I can actually remember how to pick things up off the ground, there we go, and a metal spike. Now one thing that can make speedrunning this game in particular fairly difficult is the fact that you almost never take your finger off of the circle button unless you're in a scene transition. And this is because for some reason, they coded into the game that whenever your character has taken damage or has been running for too long, if you stop running, it will remove your ability to run for anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes. Which is 
pretty darn annoying when you're trying to speedrun the game and not get hit by the enemies. These two children, you will learn to hate them if you play this game. They are incredibly annoying and they like to just pop up at random times. And if you actually are able to play this game casually and look at the storyline of it, uh, yeah, they're the main antagonists. The two little demon children are the main antagonists. Because it's a Japanese horror game and there's always evil demon children in it. As it goes. Yeah. Is Kuon the sound of a lightsaber? No, Kuon actually stands for the Nine Grudges, which is sort of explained in the game, but not entirely well until you've played it through a few times. But essentially, your standard demon ritual. Fun time at this. Now, this character, right. Sakuya, the one in the yellow, yes, she is the so. other campaign. Thank you. There's three campaigns to this game, but for most of the game, there's only two. The third one's only I unlocked afterwards. I live in the shrine. And Not this will be home. the only time we see her in this run until the last cutscene. So everybody say hi to, to Sakuya. He's we will not see her again. Of the shrine. My sister and I came from the nine grudge movies. Are there nine grudge movies? But I lost her. I know that. Safe to be alone here. There might be, but I think that incorporates all the remakes and spin-offs. That's true. Though interesting thing to note about <laughs> just off topic fact. Um the grudge movies, the English ones. They actually use the same actress for the main ghost, Kayako, that the Japanese one did up to a certain point. Huh. So the director for the first one's the same, and the actress for the ghost child and the ghost mama are the same. Neat. Thank you. Campaign three is just a boss fight. This is true. <laughs> the third campaign, the Kuon phase, is just a run to the final boss. Although, um, so you mentioned uh, that you these are the two playable campaigns, right? Like yes. the Lady in Red and Ye Lady in Yellow. Uh, I actually saw on the GDQ games list that you're going to be running a, I think it's a bid war in this game, Kuon, because you got this accepted. Yes, I did. Oh, I do want to say congratulations to that as well. Uh, this is one of two runs that I inadvertently predicted because both of you and Venata and are because I, I I talked to you like a month ago about like hey do you want to do Kuan on this show yeah and now you you got it accepted I didn't say with Venata so it's interesting to see games here also be on the main games list so yeah, big congrats on that it's kind of funny how that worked out because you asked me to play Kuan here and then I just found out yesterday it got into GDQ yeah so it's going to be interesting. I was surprised that they set it up as a bid war between Yin and Yang phase. So now it means I'm going to have to grind Yang phase again, which I am world record holder in Yang phase. I'm not in Yin phase just because the timing really, really tight on that world record. But by some of best is faster than the world record. So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. <laughs> so coming up, this puzzle here, if I remember correctly, this is the one that's not in the PAL version. So, theoretically, and definitely on consoles... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10. That puzzle isn't on the PAL version. And that is the reason why PAL version is the only thing you see running on emulators. Oh, that was a different mine I usually did. Start donating to the bid war now. <laughs> well, the difference is Yin phase you play as a different character, obviously, than you do in Yang phase. Yang phase actually makes sense. I mean, if you're playing it in English. It actually makes storyline sense. This one, Yin phase, no sense. There, there will be no sense here. There is no logic. There is no logic. There is only running. <laughs> and lots of wibbly wobbly screenness. Now this line especially, I can barely see the screen right now, especially because I have a lamp currently casting light all over my TV. So, 
a lot of this game is going to be just going from point A to point B and doing just a couple puzzles, though there is a almost disturbing amount of glitches in this game, so I'm almost wondering if, if I can get some more people to run it, we could actually find some breaks. Because there have been a few times where I have managed to glitch out the game in specific ways, like glitching through enemies. And if that can be made more consistent, might be able to shave some more time off. The only downside is the barrier of entry for this game <laughs> this is, is uh, <laughs> not cheap. It is a very, yes. very, very... Uh, I think it might be one of the most expensive PS2 games in existence. It is. No, it actually is. It is the most expensive PS2 game. If you look on price charting as just like an up. aggregate, it is It is the number one. Because previously I thought uh, I thought Futurama may have been higher. Nope. The like. three most expensive, if you, act, if you look at the like price listings, the three most expensive games, so we're excluding like, you know, developer consoles and stuff, sure. are Kuon, Rule of Rose, and Haunting Ground. Really? Yeah. Huh. And then a little further ways down there are things like Xenosaga for some reason. I think two, there's like a Half-Life game on the PS2 that I think was rare, and then I know Futurama is. Yes. So I saw that somebody mentioned tank controls. This game does not use tank controls by default. Um, I'm not using tank controls just because, unlike some games, the tank controls are especially terrible in this one. They're not... I don't know how to really describe it, and it's kind of hard to show on video unless you have the controller in your hand, but eh, they don't really work like they would in a Resident Evil or anything, so I just never used them. Okay, so here we're going to use the pliers that I got earlier in order to, see if we can do it, glitch through this guy very slightly to pick that up. Normally, you would have to either fight him or kite him around this area, but if he grabs you directly after the cutscene and you press um, up and left and keep holding the run button, you will slightly glitch into his character model and you can grab the item without having to mess with him. Then you can just turn around and leave. And that's only useful once, maybe twice, though the second time I've only managed to make it work once. The wildest thing to me about this game is that a lot of people recognize it is uh, a from soft game. Or I think from software, from soft uh, yeah. people who made Dark Souls. Yeah, uh, this game came out in 2004. We had to look up the date because I couldn't remember. We did. <laughs> so it was prior to Demon Souls. I th yeah, it's prior to Demon Souls. It's a PS2 game. Um, but I don't know where it sits in the terms of Kingsfield, so I can't. I don't know exactly when in the FromSoft timeline, but yeah, this technically shares DNA with Demon Souls and Dark Souls and all of the other FromSoft games, you know, Kingsfield and the rest. Would Which this I, game be related to uh, Sekiro? Well, yes. I, oh, they're both set in like a feudalist Japan thing. I had yeah. not actually, I had not actually put that together. So if you think about it, you, I mean, if you want to, you can say that this takes place in the same world as Sekiro just because they're made by the same company, but. So interesting thing about this puzzle right here. This puzzle can completely glitch out and make you do it twice. Now the way you prevent that is you wait a half a second. That's the way that I found to not do it. If you button mash through those too quickly, specifically the first part of the puzzle, uh, for some reason you'll do the puzzle and then it won't make the little unlocking sound and you'll have to do it again, which is... Um, rather annoying when you're trying to speed run it because it takes roughly 10 seconds 10 20 seconds this is the dark souls of horror games i'm pretty sure dark souls is the dark souls of horror games but that might be fighting words kind of calling dark Souls a horror game personally i counted as uh, i like to use the word horror adjacent because it covers that whole yeah. uh big margin of things that you don't quite know that is, that is fair. Horror adjacent. Bloodborne, I would say, is a straight-up horror game. Um, but, yeah, it is kind of interesting that this is a FromSoft game, because you wouldn't think of it. If I was to describe it, it's sort of like a mashup between Fatal Frame and Resident Evil. 
it has a sort of Resident Evil esque um, inventory management and, and movement system and almost combat system, but it definitely has a much more Fatal Frame setting. So here coming up, we have this lovely gent who's eating a leg or something. So I'm going to walk here. I'm actually going to let him catch up to me because this was something I actually discovered yesterday, believe it or not. If I can get this guy, I don't know. If I can get this guy to cross the corner, come on. Are you gonna, are you gonna, are you gonna? There you go. If I can get this guy cross, to cross the corner, it will save us time later. So that's not going to do anything right now, but it will make something coming up a little bit easier. And I haven't really made that consistent yet. I haven't figured out a consistent setup because literally I just found that out of yesterday. So going through that area, summon two dudes, which happens. These enemies are called Gaki. They are just your classic little Japanese horror demon golem looking dudes. They're great, except when they corner me, then they're not so great. Okay. One thing that I like to say about this game is that it is easy to learn, but difficult to master the speed game. Because right there, you may not have noticed it, instead of going straight down the corridor, I mashed my face into the wall for about a half second before I went towards the enemy. That baited him into jumping at me, and that stopped him from hitting me. So here, we are having our first boss fight. This is a boss fight against the Lord of the Mansion, Lord Fujiwara. He has been turned into a demon. And we don't like demons. Utsuki's not a fan, so Utsuki's gonna set him on fire. And she's gonna summon her doggo because everybody likes doggos. Now, one thing that's annoying about the combat in this game is the enemies have approximately 5 million iframes. Now, I'm actually getting... Oh, I jinxed myself. I was saying I'm, I was actually getting a good routing on this guy, or a good RNG on him, but he's deciding decided to be a jerk for a minute. So whenever an enemy is quote unquote moving, they have iframes. So whenever that guy was moving backwards, you saw my hits just went straight through him. Oh, that is the wrong button to hit. Which makes the boss fights in particular in this game extremely inconsistent. Oh, please, please remove yourself from my person. Thank you. Okay, that's bad. So, there are two types of vertigo in this game. There's vertigo from spooky ghost events, and there's vertigo from taking too much damage. Or the screen wibble wobbles, as I call them on my stream usually. Now, since I got hit there, and my screen started to go all wibbly wobbly, that meant I was one hit from death. So I ended up having to use a healing item that I normally wouldn't there. So I got grabbed there on purpose. Because with these three guys, if they're going to behave, are they going to behave? They are. Okay. With these three guys chasing me, that sets it up for... Uh oh this is bad. Okay, I got through. Um, that sets it up for me to be able to get through this area later without having to kill one of them. It saves roughly 17 seconds later on, which is why I slowly walked earlier. So that is Ayako. She is a totally innocent girl. Nothing bad is going to happen to her. She will be fine, right? Oh, no, she won't. So during this cutscene, I'll explain a little bit more about the game, as in the story, the lore of it. So our character, Utsuki, has never left this area. She is trying to find her sister. The other girl, Sakuya, is trying to get rid of the demons in the mansion that have sort of infested the area. The two little ghost children are the spirits embodying the two mulberry trees on the property. They are trying to perform what is called the Kuan ritual. And part of the Kuan ritual involves um, a lot of cannibalism, which is unfortunate. Cannibalism? Yes. You'll, you'll see in just a moment here. 
See the two little two little children? Poor little Ayako. Oh hey look, it's her sister! We found we found Utsuki's sister! Hi! Bye! And Ayako's gone. And you never see her for the rest of the game. She's gone, she's been eaten. By your sister! Oh. Who's, who's totally okay, right? She's totally sane. We saw her earlier. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, the Kuan ritual is when somebody dies and they get put into a big wicker basket full of silkworms, these silkworms sort of bring them back to life. Okay, get off me, please. Thank you. Huh. And, but they don't bring them back entirely. They have to keep merging with other people, and there's my sister again, in order to stop themselves from decaying and dying. And when they do that nine times with progressively larger creatures, so it starts off with them merging with, say, a silkworm, then a rat, then like a dog, and it gets to the point where they start eating people. Mm. Just unfortunate. So our sister's nuts and is trying to merge with people. They call you it merging. Know... It's eating them. I wasn't intending on a lot of these games having to do with people eating or consuming things they shouldn't be eating, but there are a non-zero amount of games today where there is <laughs> spooky food eating. Well, it's actually, well, spoiler alert, Agdai says that is actually the spooky, spooky eating things you shouldn't be eating marathon. Not actually the Halloween stream. Pretty much. I, I wasn't planning on that, but uh, <laughs> we might be having an early Thanksgiving stream, apparently. Uh, 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 her sister's just how we remember her. Yes. Now, because of the fact that the Kuan ritual can only be started on somebody who has been killed, and our sister is already going nutso and trying to merge with people, which means she's probably a ways through it. That means that she was dead in that opening cutscene that I showed you guys. Yep. And I'm sure Utsuki is gonna get through this just fine. I'm sure she's gonna get through this just fine. So this puzzle short is supposed to show you the path of the Kuan ritual. So it goes from a spider to like a rat to all the way to eating multiple people. And it's really simple because you just put them in order going around from the right. And those were all the discs that I collected earlier. Oh, also uh, for chat, if you guys see bunnies behind me, don't worry about it. They're just chilling. Oh. I have a rabbit cam, rabbit and chinchilla cam technically on my stream. They run around in my background all the time. And have in the past ruined my runs of this game. Because I would have a rabbit who decided it was time to jump on my leg. And it got me killed. Oh. Why, hello there, creepy wall arms. Staple Japanese organs. So one thing that's weird about this game is how it does area transitions. Some transitions are actual load screens. Most transitions like this one aren't actual load screens. They just warp you to a new area. And you can use that to your advantage like I did earlier, being able to group all three of those enemies together so I can get past them. Come on. Come on, Utsuki. There you go. This game is full of camera angles that like to either get you killed or cause you to mess up your routing. And there's a creepy children again. The multiple endings? There are not. There are three campaigns. The yin and yang phase take place concurrently. And the kuan phase takes place directly after the other two. And is only about eight minutes long if you're speedrunning it. So there's a dead guy there. We're gonna take his stuff. If I can... 
There we go. Because he doesn't need any anymore, he's dead. How long are the other phases? My average for this game is 35 minutes. On young phase, I'm usually sitting around 45, 47. And the Kuon phase is extremely full of RNG. It can either take you seven minutes or it can take you 12. Hello there. So this camera angle right here. I will always end up doing that little turn I did. Though I messed up by letting go of the run button on accident. That's because some of the camera angles force you to reset. Because some PS2 games, you were able to kind of hard to describe. Keep your own momentum through a camera angle change, even though you had 3D controls, and this game has that half the time. Oh, we got the glitch. Okay. That is a glitched enemy. Since he was by the door when I went through it, he grabbed me on the other side, and now that enemy is out of bounds. Is that useful? No. no for him it might be. Yeah, for him it might be true. He has now freed himself from the bonds of ones and zeros. Clock Tower 3. I mean, in one very particular way, I would say this story is sort of like Clock Tower 3. In most other ways, not so much. Okay. So that medicine jar we stole from the unfortunate dead man earlier, we put here. And now we have a secret little way. Now, remember how I mentioned that Utsuki keeps seeing her sister and never actually says anything to her? Yeah, there she is again. She pops up a lot. Utsuki never tries to call out to her, even though the entire point of Utsuki's playthrough is trying to find her. <laughs> All right, coming up is probably the most annoying room in the game. So our character just got knocked out. Utsuki just got knocked out and she woke up in this area, feeling a little wibbly wobbly in a wicker chest. Now, what did I explain about wicker chests earlier? They're good. They're, yeah, yeah, th yeah, they're fine. Definitely yeah. good and nothing, nothing else. Yeah. It's not like they put the dead people in there to revive them. No. Oh. <laughs> we're not. We're we're not we're not playing a dead person right now. It's fine. What happens at the end of the ritual? Well, the Utskis and Kareha's father, who is a character, I wasn't skipping half the cutscenes. Would sort of is sort of trying to become immortal, and he thinks that the that the ritual can do that. Um, it can't. The little demon children lied to him, and I will finish explaining that as soon as I get through this area because this area is um, very dangerous. Because I cannot see it. I cannot see through most of this area. Okay, there we go. This is the most annoying camera angle in the game because you will get yourself turned around. I will say from personal experience on this one part right here, it's really, I, I like that the guy that was like right there, who's on you right now, yeah. I guess, um, he doesn't seem to follow you if you go behind the screen. He just like, I don't know where she went. Yes, um, they, I've never seen the ghost actually go behind the screen, which is great because that's where the terrible camera angle is. There's this one point where you will start do, doing pir pirouettes because you can't get the character to actually go the direction you're pushing. Okay, so this is Daddy Dearest. Uh, he's trying to become immortal and using his daughters in the Kuan ritual to do so. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, he's not gonna, he's not gonna succeed. Because it's a bad guy. And you know, looking at him now and having watched some Sekiro runs, he definitely looks like an enemy from Sekiro. <laughs> Survive. Yes. 
my sister too. Entering the room nine times will cure them. Diapo, let her assimilate your flesh. Never. For the reason she is dead. Now it's your turn. Hm. If a cocoon ruptures too early, merging will be a failure to prevent that from happening. Get into the winter chest. So, if I remember correctly, because it's been a while since I played this game casually, um, they referenced there that it was Utsuki's fault that her sister died prior to the game. Which is not really true. Also, there is, there's me but dead, and there's my sister. That should give you foreshadowing as to what actually happened to Utsuki before she got put into the wicker chest. No, they don't show you that in the cutscene. You only see that in the other campaign. Alright, so here is a slightly dangerous area. If Ah, the Silkworm has obeyed me. Half the time he decides to come straight at me, and that particular enemy can one-shot you. If he uses a specific attack and stun locks you into it. So our dad told us to be, get into a wicker chest, and we are we are a good little good little daughter. So we're going to go into a wicker chest that is covered with our our own dead body. Don't worry about it; it's fine. Children can teleport, by the way. Yes, by this point, Utsuki and her sister are, bo are both dead. And in order to prevent them from decaying, they have to merge with other bodies, essentially. And as you can see, not a single facial animation or lip movement throughout all of this dialogue. That's how you know it's a FromSoft game. It's all telepathic. <laughs> exactly! That's how you know it's a FromSoft game, because everybody in FromSoft games, at least up until Sekiro, are telepathic. So one of the reasons why Utsuki's playthrough doesn't make any sense is... We didn't see her get into the wicker chest and she just wakes up here. Do we know how she got from A to B? No. Will the game ever tell us? Also no. But there is a lot of blood. Blood? And it is spooky month. It's spooky day, so. Wait, are we the best? Actually, surprisingly, no. In all of the campaigns, despite the fact, ah, oh, bad RNG. So usually you can just run past these guys and they will lunge at you instead of attack you. That's literally the first time that has happened in the last 50 runs of this game. So I guess, uh, marathon luck. Silkworm did it. A Silkworm did literally everything. So nice bit of real world facts, actually. A lot of the enemies and a lot of the aesthetic is very silkworm inspired, but the demon children that are the real main antagonists, they are demon spirits of a mulberry tree. They're not demon spirits of silkworms. Now, if anybody knows anything about how silkworms are raised, they are fed by mulberry leaves. Pay a lot isn't the mul um the mulberry bush song isn't that about like the black plague or something i think so i can't remember off the top of my head huh. but i do know that mulberry trees are what you use to feed silkworms which should be with the whole you know smaller creature consuming a larger creature or no larger creature consuming a smaller creature 
for the uh, Kuan phase leading up to eating people. Uh, sort of makes sense. Thankfully, in this run through, we will not have to see the horrific thing that happens if you open a wicker chest before they have finished merging. Y you do see that in the young phase. It's a boss. But yes, um, I bought my copy for $575, not including shipping. Uh, it, y you're not going to find it for that cheap now. And yes, that's considered cheap. So that guy there, we will not learn anything about him in this playthrough. He is the brother of our other protagonist, Sakuya. He's totally fine when you start off her campaign. I wonder how he got like that. So we have to chase him down because he has the key we need to go onwards to the end of the game. This game has a that jumping ability, quote unquote. You only ever use it in two areas of the whole game. And that was one of them. Let's see if I can show off the running thing right here because I'm safe. Okay. So she gasps and it takes a second for me to actually be able to run again. If you've been damaged, it can take you upwards of a minute to actually be able to use the run button. It will completely disable your ability to run. Which is the reason why this entire time I have hardly taken my finger off of that button. Because for some reason, it lets you run. If you, even if you've been damaged, as long as you still have access, or as long as you still have your hand on the button. For safety, I'm going to come over here and grab these for later. Well, that was not very nice of you. Oh, right. Um, he just triggered vertigo in me, so I have to heal. Because that gets rid of vertigo. You can also use something called meditate, but I need to make sure I get these two summons up. So we got our little doggo, and we have a uh, demon woman. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to walk into him. Yeah, he's a man fire, but it's fine. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to prevent him from walking backwards to get rid of as many iframes as possible. And he's dead. That usually takes a lot longer. That didn't seem like a fight. That just seemed like a beatdown. There's like three <laughs> people just walking into him. So everybody say goodbye to our doggo. This will be the last time we see him. He is a good boy. Sadly, there is no option to pet the doggo, but I'm gonna take a second here to show off meditate. So this is the reason why this game is, I call, easy to learn, difficult to master. You have a infinite useful heal the entire game. By pressing the R1 button, your character goes into what they call meditate state. And you just full heal. And you can use that whenever. Okay. So this is our sister's diary. Now... If I was to read through, I'm not going to read through the whole diary, but I just want to sort of highlight the fact that at first she's, she fell off a cliff. So she died because she fell off a cliff and Utsuki tried to save her. But if further on you go through the diary, she starts to hate her sister more than more and realizes that her sister actually pushed her off the cliff. Which is what Kareha thinks happened. But what actually happened is that those darn, those pesky little demon children... They decided they were going to spook Utsuki while she was trying to save her sister, and it caused Utsuki to drop her. So Utsuki is entirely innocent this entire game. But her sister thinks otherwise and spends it mm, mostly messing with her. Right, now that we have the bloody cloth that I picked up from that boss, we can go onwards towards the last area of the game, which in fact we have been to before, but you will see that shortly. And you're not the bad guy, no. 
sometimes with enemies in this game, you just have to beat them down because if you don't, they will beat you down because of the iframes. Okay, let's see if I can, aha, I did it. Okay, if you run into the railing there, you can trick that enemy's AI into jumping at you instead of attacking you. And that's the only way to get through here without getting either grabbed or hit. And getting grabbed or hit costs you time. We don't like that. Okay. So, here's the kids, right? One of them is dead. You never see in Utsuki's playthrough what happened to that kid? What happened to that demon, demon child? But as we can see, one of the mulberry trees has been set on fire. Will we ever find out in this playthrough what happened to it? No, no, not at all. So here we get to see exactly what happened to the poor sister. because it decides to give us this flashback now. Korea! Please, hurry! Just a second, I guess technically there was moving mouths in this scene. It's one of the only ones. So yes, it was Utsuki who put her sister into the wicker chest and started this whole thing. Or at least started her sister having to merge with people, I should say. When did these three campaigns intertwine? So we just got thrown down here by our sister. Something to remember about this particular area is I'm running here, but if I was playing the young phase, I would never hit the run button in this area. If you hit it so much as half a second, you will get swarmed by about um, 30 ghost dudes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. I've lost runs to it before because I forgot about that fact. Okay. So we just picked up two iron wedges. And apparently, Utsuki's the Hulk. And just a tiny little iron wedge knocks down an entire wall. Hello, ghost man. Bye bye, ghost man. So, yes. The demon children were the ones who started this, but Utsuki's poor sister believes it's all Utsuki's fault because um. the sister did not see the demon children. And for some reason, Utsuki never tried to explain there's demon children. This is the first instance of an instant kill in this game. There's two in the young phase, there's only one in this one. Never go through the center of the room. If you do, you will die. There is a spot of blood in the center of the room and it is an instant kill. It will suck you in. Once again, Utsuki is the Hulk. And we go onwards. I had that happen to me when I did this game, <laughs> when I was trying to learn it. I didn't realize it was there. Yep. I was like, why, how did I die? I did it during my oh. casual. So right now I'm mashing the run button. Now I can run. For some reason, there in particular, um, it because I've been running around so much, it disabled my run button because I stopped running to break the wall. That's an example of the game taking away your ability to run if you've run too much or you've been injured. Oh, I almost messed that up. Okay, this is a pain in the butt room. <laughs> so this enemy, you can't juke around him very easily, but if he gets you with his uh, multi-hit attack, it can instant kill you, just about. Unless you're very, very handy with mashing the inventory button. Why are you being such a jerk? Okay. 
Usually he does not take nearly that long. Uh, this is fine. And I have been killed there before because I forgot that I was, I forgot that that guy was there sort of, and I ran forward too far, he detected me and I died. Yes, there is a lot of worms in this game, it's rather unpleasant. So believe it or not, we are actually almost at the end of the game. I just have to get around those silkworms one more time. Hello, ghost man. Bye bye, ghost man. Game hop autosave? It does not. Um, it is an old PS2 game. Now, just for safety, I'm going to heal here. Normally, I don't. Because. Yes, bad placement. Okay. Come on. Come on. I got places to be, Mr. Mr. Worm. Okay, where's the other one? There he is. Hi. Please leave me alone. And at this point, we are safe. There is nothing that can kill me. It's just going to the end. Now I can let my hand rest because the game takes away your ability to run at this point. And time will be coming up as soon as it fades to black when I finish this little march across this bridge and get to the little grate at the other side. It's definitely a workout for your right hand <laughs> to be holding circle for 40 minutes. Okay, and... Time. So, I'll let the ending cutscene play out just to... Just so you can see what's happened to poor old Utsuki, because she hasn't merged with anybody in a hot minute after she got killed. She's she's doing fine. She's fine, Chad. She's fine. Utsuki. Hey, look, it's Sakuya again. We found our other protagonist. You can't stay here. Your sister. Utsuki. Help. Me. I beg you. And we're a demon now. What? Don't uh. do this. And GG. So that is the entirety of Yin Fizz. Alright. If you want to know what happened, run. if you want to know what happened to her, you will have to either get the game or something else. Because the only way to see what happened to her is to play the Kuan phase. I think uh, one way you can see that is uh, they checked out a a streamer who uh, maybe speedruns Kuan, and if so, where can they find said streamer? At twitch.tv slash Miss Scarlet Tanager. That's Scarlet with one T and Tanager. Um, or you can also uh, find me on Twitter at, at Miss Scarlet Tana, T-A-N-A, -A, because it wouldn't let me fit the entirety of Tanager in there. Or on YouTube with the same username because it's the same username everywhere. I thought that was a, a fun lead into that plug, given how rare this game can be. I do want to say uh, thank you for doing the run as well. Uh, normally, I like to do another question first, but since that was a nice lead into that, uh, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give? Uh, well, this was suggested, so <laughs> I would like to give a shout out to a little creature. Come here, little girl. There you go. I would like to give a shout out to the little rabbit who ended one of my world record attempts once because she decided that it was a good time to chew on things she wasn't supposed to chew on. Aww. So this is Tally. She is my rabbit. And if you come to my streams, you will get to see them all the time because they have their own dedicated webcam. Aww. Besides that, definitely a shout out to you, Ictisis, for inviting me. All right, thank with. you. But other than that, also to the speedrunning community for Kuan, as small as it is, really the three people that I've seen try to run it recently are just you, me, and Failmore. 
but yeah. And shout out to the guy who let me buy this game off him for uh, a lot lower than I would have had to get it on eBay. <laughs> Well, that definitely works in that case. I do want to thank you again for doing the run. Again, if anyone missed it, that's Miss Scarlet Tanager. I posted a link somewhere in chat, so if you want to find that, you can check them out there. As well, before we go on to our next game, you have anything else you'd like to add in before we uh, head on to that? Um, Not that I can think of. Oh, right. No, actually, I probably should. So if you guys want to see more of this game, uh, I will be running it in January, as <laughs> Tice has brought up earlier, because I got it into uh, AGDQ. Oh, yeah. And Big congrats again. Yes, thank you. It will be a bid war between playing as what you just saw or playing the Yang phase, which is by far the more difficult of all of the phases because it, it it likes to kill you a lot. All right. That sounds like fun stuff, and it should be an exciting time. Uh, that being said, we're going to be starting to set up for our next game. That being, And we're going to be, uh, you know, standing up, stretching our legs. We're going to be going into a quick break. So touch your legs, stretch your toes, all that jazz. I'm aware I said that backwards. It's fun to do that. <laughs> I say the same thing quite a lot. It sounds like I'm recorded sometimes. No, I just kind of uh, get into a pattern and repeat myself. But I do hope that you all have a good break. Stand up. This is a wellness check I'll, and all that. As well, if you miss any of the GDU Hoffic shows, check out our archive of past runs and shows at youtube.com slash games done quick. Anyway, we are going to be right back as we set up our next game.